Courtney Coco. 19-year-old Courtney Coco was last seen by her mother at her West Sandy Beach Bayou, Louisiana home in October 2004. Courtney was majoring in criminal investigation at Northwestern University when she was killed. Courtney was a softball player who enjoyed and excelled at school. She was also on the cheerleading team. Those dreams were cut short when her body was discovered just two days later in an abandoned building in Winnie, Texas. While the medical examiner could not pinpoint the exact cause of Courtney's death, it was concluded to be murder. It was a sad foreshadowing. Courtney picked her own grave out years before when she was just eight and burying her father. She currently rests in that grave and is finally getting justice. Now, nearly two decades after Coco's body was found, her suspected murderer has been arrested. David Anthony Burns, 43 of Boyce, was arrested in April of 2021. He has been charged with second-degree murder of Courtney Coco. A motive in the case hasn't been disclosed. Holly Simmons Holly Simmons was a 46-year-old nursing tech, and she was a single mom who lived with her two teenage daughters. She disappeared on November 27, 2006, directly after she dropped off one of her teenage daughters at a bus stop in Buchanan Dam, Texas. Her disappearance went cold until her body was found on July 7, 2009. This is when her body was discovered in a submerged aluminum boat in Inks Lake by a diver. The police quickly focused in on Jimmy Wolfenbarger as a prime suspect. He was her landlord, and he lived close by in an RV park. He had a contemptuous relationship with Holly Simmons, and there were problems with one of the teenage girls. Wolfenbarger, who was recently named as a suspect when the case was first reopened in 2016, is suspected of strangling Simmons to death using a wire, a cord, or a similar ligature. On May 12th of this year, he was finally arrested. So far, there has been no other information released. Mary McLaughlin. In September of 1984, the 58-year-old mother of 11 was out drinking on the town with one of her daughters in Glasgow, Scotland. They were drinking and playing dominoes at a Highland pub now known as Duck Club. Her daughter Catherine, now aged 73, says her mother was just having fun and was not drunk. Catherine left her mother in the club that night, catching a bus home, and never saw her again. Mary was last seen leaving the bar at 10.45 p.m., walking the mile home alone to her Patrick flat. She was found dead six days later in her bedroom by her own son. Police would later describe it as a brutal, sexually motivated attack. She stopped at the shop on the way home for cigarette filters, joking with the staff. They found her to be in good spirits. Another witness described what he felt was a young man following her, but the man was never identified. The case quickly went cold and stayed that way for 35 years. DNA changed that and it now identified the perpetrator as Graham McGill. Prosecutor Alex Prentice later told the jury, Mary McLaughlin was someone who's friendly and trusting. I believe that this led to her death. It is believed he approached her on the street asking for help and she obliged. Once inside the third floor flat, McGill launched what was described in court as a brutal sexually motivated attack. It ended with the grandmother being strangled and left lying on her back, covered with a green dress that had been put on backwards. In 1984, Miguel was already known as a sex offender. He was convicted of rape in 1981, when he was just 20 years old. He had been allowed a temporary release from prison in Edinburgh as part of a program preparing him for successful release from prison. On his final night of freedom, he killed Mary. By the end of the month, Miguel, who had just turned 23, was a free man, and he thought he had gotten away with murder. In the case of Mary, it was in 2019 that the ligature knot changed the case. They were able to untie it and get pristine DNA that was preserved from a time when DNA wasn't even a tool that was used. It was during previous examinations of this cord that Mary's DNA was found, but there was a trace that they were not able to analyze. Vast improvements in technology from the last time made all the difference. DNA was obtained from the rope as well as a cigarette. And when it was run through the Scottish database, police finally had a prime suspect. At the time of his arrest, he was still being managed as a sex offender, but was working in the Glasgow area as a fabricator for a company based in Linwood. Miguel was recently found guilty. It came out at trial that he had previously been jailed for life in 1999. After being found guilty of assault with intent to ravish, he was again released after only eight years. This was in 2007. He has once again been jailed for life, but he can be released after 14 years. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Take care of yourselves and each other.